Hey, what's going on everybody? Rob Marzullo here from Ram Studio Comics. Uh, got another video today for you and it's going to be, let's see, what do you want to call this? Digital Painting uh, 101 or something like that. Um, what I'm going to do is show you how I go about doing a little bit of digital painting. Uh, keep in mind I'm no, uh, you know, uh, expert here. Um, I just like to do it. I mean, I am a working professional, but I don't consider myself the greatest guy with digital paints. Um, let's see, 9 by 16, ah, that's a little bit big. Let's just do 300 DPI, 9 by 16, that's widescreen format, grayscale, uh, then we'll switch to color when we start applying color. Kind of helps you move a little bit faster. Um, but yeah, as, as I was saying, I don't feel that I'm the greatest guy at this stuff. Um, I like to think I'm decent, but I don't, uh, I don't think I'm, you know, amazing like some of the guys you see on here. But what I, what I hope to do in this video, is to give you a little bit more insight. First, I'm off. I'm gonna create a new layer, um, and I'm going to kind of sketch out uh, what I'm gonna draw here or paint. Uh, so I'll give myself kind of this rough sketch to work from. Uh, you know, I'll either do, let's see. Um, I'll either do like a loose sketch and then start uh, adding shading over top or I'll just start going right to a digital paint effect but I like doing it on another layer so I can edit it a little bit easier and move it around quicker and stuff like that so uh, so first off uh, what I want to explain to you is kind of the way that I do it so I'm gonna try to do both as I as I progress through here so uh, first off on the brush itself I have it to transfer pen pressure pen pressure with no shape dynamics on the one that I'm going to use to paint. So any brush that I go to use use to paint, you see this is kind of the chalk brush. See how if I apply more pressure it becomes darker. If I soften up and pull back it becomes very light. But no shape dynamics. So the idea is that when you're painting you're relying more on the overlapping effect uh, to get your, your tonal values. You don't want these little points at the end uh, it's going to throw a uh, kind of a conflicting texture in there, um, and then I'm going to show you how to you know set up your smudge bar, uh, brush and stuff like that. So first off, I just wanted to explain that to you the setting of just having transfer on. This is a brush that comes with Photoshop. There's nothing special to it. Another one that I like to use is similar to it. Hard round marker, no shape dynamics. You see, I named it that way, and this is simply the same thing you know but it's just the hard round and anybody that's good at this stuff will tell you uh, it's not so much the brushes it's just this little bit of setting that you see in there but it's the way that you use them so I uh, just want to show you that and we'll go ahead and get started so now for my initial sketch I will use the same settings uh, I've got one that I set up and I call it sketch marker it's the same identical brush but I have shape dynamics on so now I can get more of a you know pencil feel or marker feel um, whatever so okay so let's get started I'll go ahead and loosely sketch in this isn't going to be a real advanced drawing um, because I do want to explain the process as I do it so I'll just kind of show you how you know how I go about doing something like this just kind of sketch an eye here and plus it'll kind of show you how quick you can really come up with something I mean I'm not insanely fast at this but um, you know it doesn't take long once you get your initial line work down that you like um, you can move relatively fast through this so uh, and I'll usually turn this down just a little bit so that I'm not painting uh, completely dark um, you kind of feel out the the uh, form by slowly adding shadow and building up so and again this would be more of the sketch so that's the tough part is I almost want to go right to painting when I do this stuff so so yeah let me let me do this more in the drawn fashion see and I have kind of a conflicting um, effect when I do these because I, uh, I came up more as a pencil uh, sketch artist kind of thing and then now I'm trying to 
learn and study digital painting more so it kind of conflicts a little bit because painting is more like using various styles of brushes and, and textures to build up and create something with very little drawing uh, and I came from more of the background of comic book illustration where I was doing a lot more just drawing pen and ink very uh, line structured type work so um, it's kind of just a little bit different way you know to create something um, so you gotta retrain your your uh, mind to let go of some of the, you know some things and adopt uh, other perspectives so I'm just trying to make sure I get those eyes even um, it's probably the most difficult part to get just right you know as far as the perspective uh, lining up both eyes getting you know um, getting the shapes just right then then to proceed forward or to be able to proceed forward so uh, another good thing to do is is always kind of change the the size I can kind of interactively zoom in and out um, See, so I want to do that and then always flip it back and forth. Oh, yeah. Well, that's weird. I thought, huh, must have deleted my layer there. Let me, let me fix that. I know I put a layer in there. Goodness. Okay. Anyways, I just want the ability to resize it. So, turn it if I have to, stuff like that. It's one of the things I like most about working digitally because you can just mix it around. Oh, yeah, and flip it. Uh, flip it, and usually you can see any flaws there. I kind of see the flaw, I guess, of the top of the eye right here. So, I want to fix that. And then now the other eye looks higher, so. so that's just a little trick to see any flaws that might pop up in there. Yeah, the eye is higher. I'm starting to see it. So I'll take that and I believe just rotate that and move it down a little bit. Okay. I think the nose is a little bit large, but we'll balance that out as we uh, as we go to paint. So let me just keep pr progressing through this. And one thing I like about digital painting is you can fix a lot of things on the fly. So as long as you, you know, kind of recognize and make note of what you're, you know, seeing that doesn't uh, sit well with you, you can, uh, you can keep adjusting them and, and fixing them. I think I want this eye to be more slanted down like this. bottom lips always a bit thicker top lip should be thinner uh, both should be in shadow but the top one should obviously be more in shadow so I usually uh, block that in like that 
and then I'll come back and hit that one and that one together or you know whatever but just always making sure that that top one's a little bit darker that the sides are a little bit darker and that rounds out the form uh, let's see I need to get this shaded in like the other eye like that I always darken around the eyes because a lot of women generally wear makeup especially for beauty shots so I want to kind of darken around the eyes where there would be like some mascara and some coloring but again, I'm jumping the gun again. I just get so quick to want to hurry up and start throwing in some tones. But I still need to sketch out the rest of the form. Uh, just because there's still a little bit of uh, flaws. And actually, I don't know why I have a soft eraser. I can't stand the soft eraser. So, hard round. Uh, digital paint marker brush for the eraser. Okay. So... Get the chin in there, um, make the chin real subtle, and I think the cheek, yeah, the cheek is definitely not sitting well with me, where's my opacity, turn that sucker all the way up, yeah, this, the face is looking more comic booky. I know it's not really a word, but if you get my gist there, it's kind of more animated. I tend to always make the eyes too big, and I know I did that here, but um, I'm gonna I'm gonna really do some cool eyelashes on this one, so I'm gonna leave the eyes big. Uh, but that's uh, that's just kind of like one of my I don't want to call it a problem. I mean, I guess it is as far as doing realism, but I like it. You know, I like the the look of it. Um, but I definitely see that here where they're they're too large. Um, but I think it's going to work on this one, so I'm going to keep progressing forward with it. And let's see, the jawline should come back like this. The ear would sit higher than the eyes uh, at this angle. So I kind of do the, you know, the ear shape there. Ears have all these weird little bends. Uh, one of the things that I've been doing lately that I, I find is an easy way to, to define an ear is a shadow here, and a shadow here, and then this form comes out, and a shadow in here, and I just start looking for the shadows and place them real fast, and I don't know, it just helps later on with, with making the ear look right, because there's a lot of little complex curves in the ear. Alright, and then the neck. Um, now at a bend like this, the neck, I always picture the neck coming right from the middle of the chin almost, maybe a little bit further back than that. Um, and I picture the neck doing a small, small uh, slight slope at the base like that, almost depending on, you know, whatever curve. You know, so if the shoulder's here in front, it still happens. And if the clavicles were up front like this, it would still happen. But you can do that soft little bend. Um, and then if you want to make her look more animated, uh, even a thinner neck, that's probably a little bit thin right there. Um, but yeah, so. But this is more on digital painting, not the structure of everything. I just want to explain as much as I can and make this as informative as possible. Okay, so now I'm going to go and scale this down a bit to about right here so I can fit it in. That's probably all the detail I'm going to add. I'll do a little bit more with the hair. Actually, let me throw a little bit more of that in. And we'll get to painting, and I'll explain... Uh, some of that, you know, to the best of my ability. Again, I'm no, you know, Da Vinci over here. I'm just a guy with a, a dream and a tablet trying to change the world one drawing at a time. But, you know, I'll try to try to help you as much as I can. You know, even though I get blasted on some of my, my uh, <laughs> stuff now on my channel, you know, people badmouth me and say, like, man, you talk too much, you did this wrong, you did that, you know, I'm like, whatever, dude, you know, it's like, I'm just trying to, it's not like I'm making a killing off this stuff, I'm just doing it to help other artists out, so forgive me if I don't deliver the uh, utmost in, in what you're expecting for my free courses here, but uh, I think it's pretty funny, you know, I just kind of write, lol, thanks for the, you know, thanks for the hate, go drink yourself a glass of haterade and enjoy your day, it's pretty funny stuff, but... Um, so, 
Ugh, that's pretty ugly hair. It's probably because I'm thinking about my hate mail. Um, so, sometimes with hair, I think I mentioned this in my other ones, I'll, I'll start that way, but then I'll come back in and I'll rough out a shape. Um, and then I'll work from that shape and try to fit the hair in there. Um, I don't know if that's the right or wrong way to do it, but uh, something that uh, I seen or read somewhere, I can't remember, it was if your your drawing doesn't have a good silhouette, uh, it won't it won't work well. Like something about the silhouette uh, uh, jumps into the jumps into people's perspective quickly. You know, they look at that and they notice something wrong or right about the silhouette. So kind of keep an eye on your silhouette. And I do that with hair a little bit. If the hair's not looking right, I'll start looking more at the silhouette of it and the shape of it. So. At any rate, here's our basic uh, line work, and I added a little bit of shading in there, which I probably shouldn't have, but helps me get a feel for it. So now what I'm going to do is actually go ahead and, uh, oh, I can't, I'm going to flatten this down. Normally I would just work behind the lines uh, and kind of keep those right up to the end, but I guess I don't have to. I'm going to go ahead and flatten this down, and we're just going to go ahead and start shading. So I, I work from black and white, you, you know, you can do dodge and burn, but I like uh, just using black and white. I'm going to use that uh, brush I showed you where it's the chalk marker brush, or that's what I call it anyways. And the settings are just to transfer pen pressure, pen pressure. And I'm going to turn this all the way down, starting out to about 20%. Uh, so I work really light um, to get in to start blocking in some, some shadowing and get a feel for how the light is going to work on this form. So, you know, I come through, I hit this whole side of the head here. I always darken in the hair, because even if it's light hair, it's going to be grayscaled out more. And actually, to tell you the truth, I'll, I'll block in kind of the whole character um, a couple times, because I don't want any, any white. The only white I'm going to add is going to be the highlights that I put in there and the highlights of the eyes the whites of the eyes, you know, glare of the lips, very little actual white. So, just kind of lock that in, go to the inside of the ear, and obviously there's going to be a little bit of shadowing under the eyes, um, depending on the, you know, where the light source is coming, you're going to have the light or the shadow under the nose. Um, quick thing, I'll zoom up and show you this real fast, because I I think it works better for noses. Um, I do three kind of combined shadows for the nose, right? I do one that goes with the roundedness here of the nose. I do another that goes with the roundedness of the nostril, and then another that's the roundedness of that part of the nose. Now, I could have just went across like this, right? But for some reason, uh, and it doesn't show it so much in this perspective of it, if you kind of follow that rule when you're shading the nose, it uh, seems to work out nicer more natural by the time it's done so just a, uh, a tip there um, another thing to always take note of is the way that the the nose connects to the uh, the face here you always kind of get this um, shadow right there which and I'll actually highlight that too by the time I'm done um, you're gonna get a little bit of shadowing on the side of the nose obviously to where it rolls down and connects to the face you're gonna get a darker shadow under the eyelid like this onto the iris or whatever part of that eye is called like that uh, another one you get a shadow right here and it's really just taking notice of where all these shadows kind of you know hit they don't they don't always hit the same place every time but there are definitely a lot of consistencies uh, to the shadowing and the way they work um, now the other thing I'm going to show you is how I smudge and, and blend. I use the same kind of chalk brush. Uh, I got a little bit of scattering on because I want it to spread apart the, uh, the tones a little bit. Transfers on pen pressure and I'll show you how that works. And you know you want to vary the size of it and definitely vary the intensity. I leave it all the way up but I'm, I'm hitting very softly right now. And I'm actually hitting, right now I'm only hitting in one direction. You know, so I don't want you to think I'm pulling back and forth and applying a bunch of pressure because if I did that, this would happen. Okay, and I'm just trying to explain some of that because I've watched a lot of videos on this stuff 
and I could not get it because I, I didn't understand what people were doing. They were just kind of, oh, look at me, I'm digitally painting, it's so beautiful, but they weren't explaining little things like that. Like, you're going to want to mess with the calibration from your Wacom uh, tablet. You're going to want to mess with your settings inside Photoshop or whatever software you're using. And then you're going to want to try different things. Like right now I'm applying very soft amounts of pressure. Uh, barely hitting the edge right there. And then right there I'm just going in one direction. So those little things that you can't tell by just watching. So I'm trying to explain that because I think that was a big part of me starting to get the hang of this. And I still got a long ways to go, folks. I mean, you'll, you know, stick around, though. You're going to see a, a big, uh, I don't, I'm don't. i not trying to brag or nothing, but you're going to see a lot of progression in my work in the next few years because I am starting to finally get the swing of it. Um, and I'm just at the tip of the iceberg. So um, that's why I'm saying you're going to see a, a progression. I'm not saying because I'm some amazing artist that is going to, you know, break records. I'm just saying that, this stuff is extremely cool, and once you do start to get a, an understanding of it, your mind starts opening up to all the things that you can accomplish with it. And you're like, you know, excited. That's that's what it boils down to. You know, you you realize that holy crap, man, this this is a really cool way to create art. You're gonna once you do get it, you're gonna you're gonna love it. It's fun and exciting. So one of the things that I have to get in the habit of doing that I don't do enough of now uh, but I'm, I'm at least recognizing it and that's the first way to solve any uh, problem or issue is to blend out these lines um, I think I have a bit of an affection for the line work because of my comic book background but for digital painting uh, you know even though there's varying styles of that but for digital painting you typically don't want uh, any lines almost none um, you know, you can have obviously lines for like say the eyelashes and the hairs on the face, but uh, the, the you know hair strands of hair from the head. But that's about it. Um, if you study, um, you know, faces and face painting and stuff like that, um, there's ultimately no line work in there. So you got to go through and soften all these edges, um, and just focus on getting tra uh, transitions from uh, various tonal value light to dark and you know obviously given enough uh, transition of light to dark you're, you're going to kind of create a line uh, but that's you know that's different than a line that you just draw with an ink pen right so that's kind of what you're trying to look at and figure out and you don't want to over smooth and over blend even though I'm doing a lot of that right now but I still have a lot of tones to put down, so I'm just kind of softening all this up and seeing seeing if there's still any adjustments I want to make before I get uh, too, uh, too much down. Even though one of the really cool things about Photoshop is like liquify and still being able to grab and edit stuff and use quick masks. So you can, you can still fix uh, issues well into the painting, which is really cool. Um, and I'll show you something like that once we get a little bit further into it. So I'm still just using the blending brush, still just pushing tone around. Um, another way to do this too is you can actually have less scattering and more of a hard brush, uh, hard round set to the same settings of transfer, but no, um, and I'll, I'll use one here in a second, but uh, no scattering. You're not trying to soften and smudge the stuff around as much as you're just trying to move the, the shadows around, smudge it around. So you literally can grab certain tones that you see in your design that you like and kind of push them all the way around where this one's softening it as I'm pushing it so it's not going to keep uh, the exact tone it's going to soften it the more I push it but that's good for blending or this type of blending so I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a minute okay so back to uh, the chalk brush and I'm going to darken uh, the eyes a bit more Another way to put texture in there, I actually like the brush that I use for hair, which is another Photoshop brush. All these are brushes that come with Photoshop. 
I don't have any specialty brushes. So but this one right here is great for doing hair because of the way the, the strokes overlap and you start getting uh, strands of hair. Control-Alt-Z to back, uh, back up more than once just in case you don't know that. Just recently figured that one out. I was pretty happy. So I was always ticked out you couldn't just control Z back a bunch, but for whatever reason, so you don't have to go over here and hit history, it's control alt Z. Um, and I'm using a Mac, so it's command alt Z. Sorry, used to the PC days. Uh, so anyways, this one's really good for the texture in the eyes. So if you come up close here, and you start working this way with the brush, those overlapping strokes will start giving you that that texture that you're looking for in the uh, iris. And then vary your level of opacity to get some, some more depth in there. Now, notice I have black and white over here. If I hit X, it'll flip that, and I can paint back in the, the highlights with it. And right now, I'm just kind of feeling it out. I'm not, uh, I'm not kind of sure yet where I want the, the brightest of the highlights. Uh, sometimes I'll just kind of throw the glints in there just to round out the form a little bit real quick and give myself a better idea of how I want this to look. I'll just kind of keep going back and forth with the dark and light until it starts to uh, stand out and look cool. The other thing is I'll you know zoom in and out see how it's working. You know again her eyes are really big at this point. I'll probably scale them down a bit because they're, they're actually huge but um, you know what? I'll stay on the hairbrush just for a second I'll show you how cool this is for hair. Again, you don't you don't have to look at it like you're drawing every strand of the hair. A lot of what gives you this effect is the overlap. So you just kind of you know have fun with it, mess it in there, throw it around. You're gonna get the cool hair effect by a lot of your overlap strokes. Not you know. You don't really draw the hair until right at the end, at least I don't. Right now I'm just looking to get some texture in there. thing this one's good for is the hair on the eyebrows so I'll throw a little bit of that in there like that. and even the eyelashes I just kind of turn it down start painting those in Good thing to remember with the eyelashes is that they're not perfect. Some will stick together, some will be longer, some will be thinner and thicker, that kind of thing. So to have a good amount of variance in there to get a little bit more realistic look. And the bottom part of the eye um, kind of swoops right there. This part curves down. Still trying to figure out eyes and get them just right. But uh, one of the things is to realize that there's always kind of this highlight right here. So I kind of paint over that black line. I paint this in like that. And then I come back with the, you know, 
the eyelash eyeliner kind of effect and then trim that back out like that it just looks like hair more realistic than just trying to draw these in and then the part where they start to point towards the camera and bend back around the eye I always kind of throw a couple uh, conflicting ones right there I think that looks a little more natural I used to always draw the eyelashes all pointing in one direction and the more you look at eyes you realize that they don't they roll around with the eye so a little more texture in here even though I'll probably smudge some of this out and get rid of it but the eyes got a lot of cool little textures in there and one of the things that helps me paint eyes just so you know um, I can get a halfway decent version with the grayscale but uh, when I go to actually uh, color it I'll be able to see it a little bit better so I grayscale this uh, design out a bit then I add some color and then I go back in and I change my grayscale a little bit more if I'm trying to get a really you know kind of more detailed rendition or whatever um, I can't see entirely as much as I need to in just grayscale. Uh, my tones end up being a little bit off. So, just another way to look at it. You know, that you're just kind of working through this process and changing it as you go. Alright, so now this one. Let's see, something's not sitting right with me on this. I think this eye, this, the eye part of this eye, I don't know if that makes any sense. This part of this eye, I think, is too large. I think that's what's bothering me. Well, I guess what I'll do, too, is I'll show you how I would decrease the size of the eyes here. Even though I, you know, again, I like the animated look. Uh, but the eyes are too big so what I'm going to do is show you how I would go about changing that so I can grab this eye select it like that hit Q for quick mask and then I want to soften the edges of this so filter blur Gaussian blur Gaussian blur just and I'm softening the quick mask it's not doing anything to the artwork yet so but what it's going to allow me to do is grab the artwork See how it's got the softer selection now? Hit Q again. So even though you can't see it, it's got that. I'm going to hit uh, Control C, Control V, and now Control T to resize it. But it's going to resize it and it's going to have a softer edge to it. So I'll be able to blend it back through e more easily. Um, just don't want to tilt that high more. Let me try right there. still bugging me um, but yeah let's try that so now if I go to layers I can see the change I just sized it down just a little bit probably could even go further but I'm gonna I'm gonna stay with that because I do like the eyes a little bit bigger um, that looks a little bit better to me so let's get back in there but yeah that quick mask effect uh, is a really good way to do it it was a uh, that effect was shown to me a lot of these techniques were shown to me by um, a really fantastic artist you can check them out here on YouTube I work with them uh, it's a friend of mine named Chris Scalf and he does amazing digital painting um, you go to his channel and it's just like wow so be sure to check his stuff out and you know try to learn from him uh, that's where I've gotten a few of these techniques so really great work So I'll keep painting on these uh, eyelashes, trying to get the, you know, not inconsistency, but just variation in there. You know, you don't want them all just all identical. It looks too unnatural. And let's see. I want to 
say I do have that, yeah. This part is just too big, so let me try to adjust that real fast. Like that. Again, we'll do the quick mask, filter, Gaussian blur. And it looks like it encroached on the eye too much, but let's see if it works. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, I think that'll work because I can still control E will merge it down. Uh, all I got to do is just take my blend tool and blend off that edge. It's a good thing about digital painting you can do that because it's all it's all just shadows, so you don't have to be afraid of you know if you get a funky line like right there. By the time you keep blending it and painting over top, it, excuse me, real easy to get rid of something like that. So this right here is the shadow from the eyelid, placing that in there. It's going to be darker on the sides of the eye a little bit like this because it's a rounded form. Uh, you're always going to get uh, a little bit of darkness right here from the roundedness under the eye. Just kind of paint that in there and I'll probably soften that up after I um, keep working on this but I like to place that in there a little bit darker at first and then right here you get the same thing so you kind of round that out even though it's looking like she's got messy mascara on right now and then again the highlight under the eye you want to get that painted in before you do the uh, eyelashes at least I do like that X flips back and forth your uh, brush color. Oh, have my brush too large. And then the bracket keys, uh, which are above the quotation mark, so your left and right bracket keys, will adjust your brush size. And that's another really handy feature for moving quickly. Uh, you know, you just kind of keep toggling those back and forth and pretty soon you don't even look you know as you're adjusting your brush keys you're just your hands over there just doing it so that's a nice little time saver too all right so let's pan back yeah so they're starting to take form there's uh you know they're not perfect there's a little bit of funkiness right through here that i'm not liking um but you know this is more of a tutorial i'm just kind of trying to buzz through this. If I was actually uh, doing this portrait, I would actually be a lot further into it right now. I try to make these things go by. Um, I think even my really ultra detailed portraits, or you know, whatever, my level of detail, what I consider ultra detailed, uh, won't, you know, I won't put any longer than two to three hours in them now. So, you know, you can imagine that I'd be a lot further um, but, you know, I'm trying to explain this and, and, you know, talk and walk and chew gum here at the same time. So, um, so now what I'll do is soften some of these lines. You want a little bit of texture in there, uh, but not too much. One of the things about drawing beauty shots is um, you're going to have a lot more softer lines. Um, you know, if this was like, say, a portrait of an old man, then yeah, you can have a lot of texture in there. It kind of adds to the grit and to the flavor. But when it's more of a beauty shot, you want a lot of softness in there. So that means not a lot of hard lines. So I'll just keep softening up these lines, even the lips. Um, you know, I had a problem for quite some time where I would leave the lips more like how they look now with the outlined version, you know, or uh, kind of a tight, um, or a hard looking uh, line around it. So now I try to soften them up. Uh, I've been noticing a lot from studying photos that the lips have a very soft transition, especially on the sides right here and the sides right there. It's almost uh, non-existent as far as any line work. It's just a soft shadow or transition of tonal value. Uh, it looks a lot more natural and sensual and soft. So um, you can actually do a little bit of that over the entire line work and then really soften it up on the sides right there. 
you know, you want a little bit of darkness under the bottom of the lip to show that kind of poutiness and depth right there. So you do a little bit of darker shadow there. Soften that back up, soften this. And we got some funky shadows in here, but I'll try to fix those. And really just go around and try to soften every one of these lines. Like I said earlier, you don't want a whole lot of uh, actual line work in there. Unless you're going after a more animated comic book kind of feel, uh, you know, then you can obviously do whatever. But if you're going for a touch of realism, then you want less lines and just good use of shadow and, and tonal value. And again, I still have my hand on the bracket keys moving, even though it's the blending brush, I'm moving the size of it back and forth, back and forth. So areas that I'm trying to soften the entire area and flow that, uh, that tone through the whole area, I increase the size. And areas where I'm trying not to damage, say, some kind of line work or um, shadowing, I'm putting le less pressure with a smaller brush to kind of conserve uh, you know a certain thing I might be seeing in there so okay now as far as the lips um, I'll use again the hairbrush works really well for the texture that you see on the lips there's always uh, majority of the time a highlight on the bottom lip and the top lip is mostly into shadow um, not entirely but like I said you know, a lot of times so it conveys more of the depth like that I'll do a little bit of the highlight on the bottom of the lip, not much, definitely not as much, or top lip, on the bottom of the top lip, um, but definitely not as much as I do on the uh, bottom lip. And then I want to get rid of this uh, shadowing on the top lip. Generally there's a, a tiny bit of a highlight on the top of the lips like this, and I won't leave it as a line, I'll soften the top of this line. I'll put that in there like so, and then I'll soften it up as it transits, uh, makes a transition upward. And I'm also not liking the darker shadow right there, so I'm going to try to soften that a hair. And then I want a brighter, specular highlight on a few spots of the lip to show kind of a, a glossiness, like that. And the teeth are mainly in shadow on a pose like this, but I'm going to brighten them up and then tone them back down to try to get the form of the teeth uh, in there. Real, again, subtle. And a little bit of highlight on the eyes. And there's usually always a specular highlight of some kind on the top of the nose. top of the chin and it's funny too when you start to do more and more of these um, you start noticing um, that there are certain highlights and shadows that are pretty consistent with almost all uh, faces and drawings and it's it's really strange because you would think you know as complex as the faces and um, however face is different that you wouldn't see as many consistencies as you do but there are definitely a lot of them so it, it gets to the point where you, you know, you, I mean, you still look at reference because you try to improve your knowledge of, of facial drawings and stuff like that, but you, uh, you almost just start working from memory, uh, instinctively because there are so many consistencies. So, like, there's always a little highlight right here, almost always. So, just little things like that. Um, Let's see what's what am I missing here? I think this highlight needs to be a little bit more rounded to round that cheekbone out. And then I'll just kind of play with it and go back and forth. So I'll do a little 
you know, at this point I start thinking almost like, um, like I'm modeling clay or something, you know, just poke and prod and add a little, take a little away, you know, and just, you know, just kind of feel the process out, you know, see what I like and see what resonates and then, uh, keep, uh, keep pressing forward. Um, all the while looking at the clock and going, okay, how much time do I get in this thing? And is this a paying gig or am I just practicing? You know, all that stuff comes into play, unfortunately. As the old saying goes, if it doesn't make dollars and it doesn't make sense. It's really sad to throw that in there with art, huh? Like art is art should all just be passion and love of doing it and all that. But then when you become a working professional, you uh, you have to start thinking in terms of how much could, you know, could I be earning doing something else? Am I, you know, making the best use of my time? I got a family to provide for, blase splee. So, fun, fun. Which I guess is good because in all honesty, I love doing this stuff so much that I would just probably draw on one piece for months on end, you know, trying to really perfect it or something, you know, but now I'm to the point where I just like, you know, I like the completion of the piece and I like to see what I can do in a short amount of time and, you know, and just, have, you know, keep some kind of schedule because a lot of people just get so, uh, you know, so out of whack with, you know, produ production and, you know, You've got to have deadlines if you want to, if you want to make any real money at anything. You can't, you know. There's very few jobs in this world where you can just throw something out when you uh, when you feel like it and make a killing at it. You know, if you're some star and famous type, and maybe, but in the real world, for most people, it's like you get paid to produce. That's where the money comes in. So you got to be able to slap this stuff out. So yeah, the hair, you just kind of keep going back and forth. I'll do some dark, some light, some smudging. Um, I usually even take the same brush for hair, and I'll use that to smudge so it keeps a little bit of that texture in there, but also allows me to blend some of it up. And usually when I'm doing this, I'm looking for cool shadows, like, because you don't want the hair to look depthy. Like right now, it still looks very flat and boring. But as I kind of, again, keep poking and prodding and, you know, modeling this piece of clay in a sense, uh, I just look for, you know, a cool shadow to pop out, you know, a place where I can add depth and make the hair look like it's more textured and overlapped. And unfortunately, it still hasn't presented itself as I'm talking about it. Um, let me try again. Let me turn the opacity down a little bit more. Turn the brush down. Um, the other thing is to do uh, different shapes, not having all of it go the same direction. So now that I'm on, like, I don't know, layer two or three of drawing the hair. I'm doing a, a few just sporadic kind of shapes to see if that helps uh, texturize it and bring something out. I thought I saw something right here, but maybe not. Come on, don't make a liar out of me. Well, at any rate, you can see where I'm going with it. I do If I do this thing completely in uh, real time and keep messing with it, it'll probably go on forever because I'll keep thinking with it and adding and shading. Uh, another good way to pull a little bit of quick texture out of this is get it to about that point. Let's pan back, um, grab the dodge tool. I'll put this on a soft brush. Where are we at? Soft tip. And on highlights, probably tone it way back to 40%. And 
and now I'll just kind of paint over it a little bit where I think the stronger point of the light would be the face stuff like that and just just give it a little bit more um, of a glare and sometimes that'll help me figure out where I want to texture it more see like right there it worked I don't know if you could see that but that effect that it gave right there shows me kind of a cool, like that's what, what the hair should look more like. This part looks a little more unnatural. I can see a little bit in there, but whatever. Again, this is partially because I'm explaining it and doing it. I'm going to try the soft brush. Where are we at? Smooth blending brush. Add a little bit smaller size. Try to blend some of this up. flattening out to me. Hmm. Well, that's why hair is a whole other monster. Because you do it just right and it comes out immediately. And then other times you, you got to do what I'm doing here where you're just kind of trying to find your shapes. And then I'll turn the brush way down, kind of get the loose little strands in there, give it a little bit more depth. Some of those will go up here and in front of the main blocks of the hair. You'll get these loose ones as the hair is flim flamming around. Just like that. Yeah, still really depressed with the way the hair looks up here though, right in this spot. Like I wanted a darker shadow here and here to show that it was um, layered or whatever. Yeah, I'm really not digging the, the shape I pulled out of that. Let's try to flip it back one more time. A lot of times i got to turn the opacity of the white down a bit. Um, it's almost like the, the white is uh, too overpowering too quickly or something, so I have to tone that down a bit. Back to the highlight one more time, see if I can pull a little bit more of the texture out. Yeah. At any rate, I'm not digging that, but oh well. Um, all in all, I like the, the face, I guess. I'm sure I'll get some naysayers telling me why it's horrible, but it's a practice piece and mainly a narr you know a narrative to explain the process. Um, I had somebody that requested, you know, saying, "Hey, I've noticed some of your digital paints. How do you do that?" Um, so hopefully that this sheds a little bit of light on the uh, process. Uh, again, I'm not the greatest at this stuff. I don't think I'm some amazing digital painter. Um, like I said, I come more from drawing comic books and just doing this because I do uh, I do storyboards for uh, commercial and television work now, so um, this is one of the techniques that we use to produce what we do. So I just figured I would show some of you YouTubers out there how I go about doing it. Um, just one particular way you could do it. Um, and uh, I guess one last thing before I wrap it up is then you just take a layer, put it on, oh, I gotta change this to RGB, don't flatten because I got another layer here, turn it to color, 
and really fast just with the soft brush I'll throw on some quick color um, soft shadow brush uh, I got my swatches here I'll pick a decent skin tone oh, I've got my opacity way down Let me turn that up a hair Yeah, so now with uh, color mode, you can just kind of softly paint in some tone, um, like so. Let's see here. I like doing it on another layer because I can go back and edit it a little bit more. So I'm not uh, not real good with coloring. Uh, I've always been more just into black and white. But you see how quickly you can just throw your color in, which is kind of fun, you know, just with this color mode effect. I'll kind of use varying levels of color mode and uh, overlay. And then I'll also mix in some, uh, to tell you the truth, I can turn this opacity way down. Add just a little bit of blush to the cheeks there. Kind of, does that work? All right. Um, but yeah, you can... Um, even do a, uh, some light opacity of, um, uh, what do you call it, oh. of uh, in normal mode for your final rendition. Um, and what color would the hair be? More of a brown, I guess. Let's try that. Does that look red? Hmm. Yeah, I suck at color, so. Yeah, that definitely has a red hue to it. Oh well. Let's go with it. But yeah, so. And the, the thing that's affecting the color here is the tonal values of the gray. So that's what I was saying earlier about painting some of this in and then going back and re editing your, uh, your gray. And I'll show you that too. So, and that's probably why this has a touch more of a red. I mean, there's definitely some red in that brown. <laughs> Sounds funny. There's some red in that brown, but um, that's uh, you know, you can adjust that by going back and intensifying or highlighting the the original grayscale tone value. So let's get that in there and. missing something but yeah so now I can go back to the grayscale and I you know based on whatever I do if I highlight it more or if I say maybe dodge some of the areas and deepen it see how it'll change the the colors and you generally want to go back and color recolor over top of it one more time or no that might be when you're actually doing it on the actual layer so um, what else I guess the teeth still aren't done, but I'll just shadow those in. You're going to get a shadow from the top lip anyways, and really just kind of a, a hint of the teeth at this, uh, this amount of her mouth being open. That looks bad though, it looks like she's got some dental issues. Yeah, another thing I hate drawing, teeth, sucks. It's pretty bad because my fiance is a dental hygienist, so I should be like good at drawing teeth or something. But uh, they are really easy to get wrong. So yeah, and my shadows are still a little spotty there and a little off. But you know, hopefully you understand that this was just more or less just a way to show you uh, techniques and you know um, how I go about the process. Because like I said, um, oh. See, I was painting on the actual gray tone. Because um, I had a few people ask, so I figured, well, I better do a video on it. And then maybe go back to this and just take the dodge tool and grab mid-tones or shadows. Let's try shadows first. And I'm going to just try to soften up some of these weird shadows on the face 
because the, the darkness of the shadow, especially right here, is bugging me. So I'm going to try to soften that up here and here. And you always kind of want to soften it up right through the bridge of the nose if you want to make uh, a beauty shot look a little more attractive. And I'm, I don't know why I've got too much funky shadows right through there. Let me try mid-tones. I just have to play with that. And yeah, it's a little better. Yeah, you want to be very sparingly with your shadows uh, on the face right through there. Alright, so hopefully this is showing you something. Um, you know, let me know if you have any questions. I'll try to uh, answer those as best I can. Um, and uh, let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see in the future. I'll try to get to that. Uh, I try to do a video once a week. I uh, missed last week. Sorry about that. I just got a lot going on. Uh, but I will try to uh, keep up with that schedule. You know, I want to be consistent and not fall off. I really enjoy uh, doing this stuff uh, for everybody. And uh, the feedback, you know, even though some of it tends to be <laughs> negative. But, oh well, you know. Um, but let me know if there's something I can address that will help you. Um, I'm really big into wanting to help, you know, young artists uh, get better. Um, I think it's part of the, you know, part of art, part of, you know, just becoming better and, and helping those around you to become better. I think you're, you know, it's kind of a good life, you know, lesson anyways, is to help those around you in your perspective field and life in general. So, yeah, so there it is. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Um, be sure to come back for more and uh, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.